In this presentation, we will discuss the contribution margin, contribution margin per unit, and the contribution margin ratio. We're going to start off with the contribution margin per unit. These are going to be similar concepts. They're very related, but they can get a little bit confusing to consider what the contribution margin is, what the contribution margin per unit is, and what the contribution margin ratio is. They're all related. They're all similar in some ways. We'll start with the per unit because that's going to be what it is in its basic building block type format. So the contribution margin per unit is the amount by which a product's unit selling price exceeds its total variable cost per unit. So once again, we're considering on a per unit basis here what we have in terms of the selling price. And then that will be compared to that's going to be what's coming in, what we're getting as compared to the variable cost per unit and that's what's going to be going out so obviously if we think about this per unit if we're selling things like a coffee mug we're saying what's going to be the selling price for that particular coffee mug that one piece of inventory that we sell and then what's going to be the variable costs not the fixed costs we're not talking about normal kind of financial accounting terms where we're saying everything that goes into the production of the inventory we're not talking in other words of the cost of goods sold of that inventory unit only the variable costs the variable portion because those act in a similar fashion so remember what we're doing here within managerial accounting is we're always breaking things out by the behavior of the cost and you might be saying well that's going to be an inaccurate number because if you think about financial accounting you're going to be saying hey what i'm really gaining from the sale of that should be including everything in this cost to give me basically the gross profit of the sale per unit in other words, variable costs shouldn't be it because it's not going to be included everything. And you might say it's not including things like overhead, which are oftentimes the fixed portion that is still necessary to apply to the production. However, we'll see that the contribution margin, just basically the sales price over the variable component, the variable component will be a very useful calculation when we think about managerial accounting and types of decision making related to it. Also note that we've also seen this contribution margin, not contribution margin per unit, but contribution margin when we looked at the contribution margin income statement, which was the total revenue or total sales minus the total variable costs. You'll see after, this is going to be, in essence, the building block that will get us to that point. We'll be able to take the contribution margin income statement, in other words, and break it down to its components with the use of the contribution margin per unit with the use of the number of units that we sell and we'll be able to go the other way as well we'll be able to take the contribution margin per unit look at how many units we're going to sell and be able to make predictions of a future uh, contribution margin income statement or a projected contribution margin income statement that's the power that's the use of a calculation such as this when we think about the contribution margin then again we're thinking about the contribution margin and the contribution margin per unit first we'll think about the contribution margin which is going to be the sales we're talking total sales now not per unit and then we're going to have the variable costs total variable costs as we saw in the contribution margin income statement if we take sales minus the variable costs that gives us the contribution margin now note when you see the contribution margin and when you work with it in something like a spreadsheet or a spreadsheet program you're often going to see it in this format because you want to calculate the contribution margin and then think about well what what's it going to be the contribution margin per unit and so or we might see it the other way around we, we've got the units and then we'll see the contribution margin but in any case notice that when we see this line item here it's going to say contribution margin or contribution margin per unit because it's, it's representing this two lines so in other words if you if you make a financial statement the first line is going to have to be one or the other contribution margin per unit or contribution margin and then the other line is going to have to be contribution margin per unit or contribution margin so that's why these terms they can get a little bit confusing when you try to format your spreadsheets and how you're going to be putting this together so just be aware of that now we're talking about the contribution margin per unit over here we're going to say that the sales are going to be $57 per unit. That would be given. We would know that because we would know how much we sell, in our case, the coffee mugs for. And then we have the variable costs of $30. And again, we would know what the variable costs are because we broke that up in our uh, CVP analysis. We know the variable components of uh, our, our costs. 
And if we subtract those two out, the 57 minus the 30 gives us the 27. So we have the contribution margin in total. We have the contribution margin per unit. Now we need to consider what the contribution margin ratio is. So now another word with a contribution margin in it. So just note they're all similar. They're all related. Uh, however, they're slightly different. So you want to make sure are we talking the contribution margin? Are we talking the contribution margin per unit? Or are we talking the contribution margin ratio? Here, contribution margin ratio is percent of units selling price that exceeds total unit variable cost. Once again, percent of units selling price that exceeds total variable costs. How would we calculate that? We're going to take the contribution margin per unit and we're going to divide that by the selling price. So remember that, so now we got the contribution margin per unit. What was that? We just looked at it. Contribution margin per unit is the selling price minus the variable costs per unit. So the selling price per unit minus the variable costs per unit. That is the contribution margin per unit. You're going to take that and divide it by the selling price to get the contribution margin ratio. Now, when you consider this, you're probably going to have a similar table like this. And you're always going to be building these tables. And you, can, and you might as well just build them all out, especially if you're using Excel. So you get an idea of setting these tables up, how to calculate these, what the relationships are between them. So we had last time, we had the contribution margin where we have the sales, the variable cost, the contribution margin in total. We also have it in units. So if we have the units over here, then we can look at our formula and we could say divide that out. We get 0.47 in a uh, decimal format or 70, 47%. In other words, you're going to see your table here. And we're going to say, all right, now we, we see what the contribution margin is, which was the sales minus the variable cost contribution margin per unit, 27. So we'll take that 27 and we'll divide it by the sales which is 57 divided by 57. And that's going to give us, it's not exact, but 0.47. So we've rounded here. So be aware this is rounded. <laughs> and then if we move the decimal two places to the right, we're going to get that 47%. Now note that we always concentrate on the contribution margin most of the time, but what we're really doing here is a similar kind of ratio analysis that we would see on an income statement. This is similar to uh, what we'd see in an income statement, which would be income minus cost of goods sold. This is going to be a similar to a contribution margin income statement type of calculation where we have sales minus the variable costs to get to the contribution margin. So just note that we're comparing everything to sales. So we compared the 27 to the sales. We can do the same for the 30. So if I compared 30 variable costs per unit to the sales divided by sales, we get 52.6 uh, or about 53. And again, if I move the decimal over, uh, 53. And of course, 47 and 53 is going to add up to 1 or 100% or sales over sales. Uh, 57 divided by 5 or let's say uh, 57 divided by 57. Okay, so also note that we could do the same thing here. We did this on a per unit basis. That's what our definition said. But of course, we could do the same thing with the relationship between the total sales and variable costs if, of course, the, the, uh, the ratio is the same. In other words, every unit was sold for 57 and the variable costs were all 30, then the relationships will be the same. So we can, if we have our contribution margin here and total dollar numbers, we can then take, and let's keep this down here, we can take the uh, 2679 divided by the sales 5700, which is going to give us the same number, of course, as the 27 about, this is rounded, over the 57. And so we get the 47. Again, be careful of rounding. Same kind of situation. And then if we take the variable cost, the 3021 divided by the 5700, that gives us the 53. And if we add those two up, we get the 100%. Again, given uh, for rounding, 5.7 over 5.7 as well will give us the 100%. So you're always going to be wanting to build out these types of tables that you'll have. And this will be similar to a contribution margin type of income statement. Just again, be, be aware that you're going to be considering total costs per unit costs. And when you think about these line items, then you're going to have to consider uh, whether you're talking about which column you're having here to represent total costs and the per unit costs.
and the contribution margin percentage is not going to it might not be as clear given the description because it's they're all going to be on the same line you'll have to go to the headers up here to know exactly what you're talking about you want to keep them distinct in your mind the best way to do that is to calculate them all uh, most of the time when you have these types of problems you just do all the calculations and try to rework them and calculate them in different ways so you get a just a good idea of all the relationships that go on between these how they're similar uh, how they relate to each other the similarities and the ratios between the per units and the totals.